What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at what's new in Xcode 13, fresh off the presses from Apple WWDC 2021. Lots of new goodies and things that we can now do in Xcode 13. So that said, drop a like down below and let's get into all the new stuff. All right, let's go ahead and talk about what's new in Xcode. So here we are in Xcode 13 beta one. I'm just going to go ahead and create a new project, call it whatever you'd like. It's really not relevant for today's video. We'll call it what's new. Go ahead and create it and toss it wherever you'd like. And let's get it all to the new stuff that we have this year. So first and foremost, the design changes. Let's talk about all of those. Everyone's favorite. So the first thing you might notice here on the left hand side, the actual file icons are different now and they're representative of what the file is. So we have a little Swift icon. We have something for assets. Uh, storyboard apparently is just this like brush and pencil looking thing. The other thing you'll notice on the left is we no longer see our file extensions. So I think it looks pretty clean. You can actually go and bring them back in Xcode preferences, but I like them as is. So we're going to leave them like so. So other than that, what else has changed? So at the very top here, you'll notice that the simulator dropdown has moved over to the right. The one thing that I actually think is slightly annoying, it's not showing up here, but this play button to run your app on the left here, when you wanna pause it, the pause button is actually to its left. And for those of you running Xcode 12, you know that the position has switched, so I'm still hitting the wrong button half the time. The other thing that has gone ahead and changed here is you no longer have a bar at the top for when your project is building. Up here to the right of the simulator, you have a circle now that shows as the project compiles. So some nice visual tweaks. So moving along, we have a bunch of autocomplete related improvements. So I wanted to actually write out the code here so y'all could see what the improvements are. So let's go ahead and create a function here and we'll say go ahead and sort uh, things, which is going to be an array of perhaps uh, string. So what's really cool is if we start going, uh, if we start to type for a thing, you'll see there it auto completed. If we say thing, it gives us auto complete for thing in things. So what's pretty cool about this is the fact that Xcode can figure out singular versus plural vocabulary. And I actually have seen people do some pretty cool things with this where you talk about something like if this is geese, right? I don't know if that's how you spell a goose, but if I say for uh, goose in geese, let's see if we can figure that out. For geese in geeses, apparently, or geese in geese, it's figuring out how to do. I want to say I spelt this incorrectly, but anyways, I digress. This is the first part of autocomplete, which is pretty cool because you can uh, be slightly more lazy now because Xcode does half the stuff for you. So cool, though, that makes pretty pretty good straightforward sense. Let's talk about the next thing. Let's say you have a optional. So let's say we have some data coming in here. And let's say we want to unwrap this data before we use it. Well, Xcode now auto-completes this for you as well. So we can start typing guard let data. And here you can see in the auto-complete, it gives you guard let data equals data. And one place that we use this very commonly in our code is when we perform a network call. When we go and use URL session and get some data back, we generally unwrap it. So what's nice is Xcode autocomplete will do half of our job for us with this stuff. The next thing with autocomplete is pretty interesting. So let's say we wanted to work with something that resided in a different framework. So here we're importing UI kits, but what if I wanted to work with, let's say a AV player, which is a part of AV foundation. So let's say I say player here, we'll say var player, is going to be of type AV player. And let's go ahead and start doing that again. We'll say AV player. And sometimes it actually is a hit or miss if it works. Let's actually try a different example. So let me give you a simpler example. Let me actually go ahead and create a new file here. Sometimes this is hit or miss if it works because it is beta one. So let's go ahead and create a new file and we'll go ahead and call it test.swift. And let's say we wanted to write a function in here and it's going to be uh, render a image and we'll go ahead and say UI image. And you'll see that we do see it in the autocomplete, but we have this warning down here too. 
And the warning is saying this class is defined in UI kit, and if we choose it, it's going to import UI kit, which it actually did for us right here. So let's do a little bit of a different example to see if it works to other frameworks as well. Let's say we want to use the Swift UI color operator. We can go ahead and type in either uh, just color like that. In CI color, you can see that this will be coming in from core image. Um, you know, it's not Swift UI, but it is a different framework, so it hopefully illustrates my points. Um, for some frameworks, it seems like it's not working, which is a little strange, but it might be a beta one thing. So the final thing about uh, autocompletes. So let's say we had an enum here, we'll call it state, and it had a couple cases. Let's say first, second, third, and fourth. And let's say we were taking in a state of this type state, uh, disregard what the function is saying for now, we're just gonna play with the enum. If I go ahead and say switch on the state, you'll notice that it'll actually give me, let's try that one more time, we'll say switch on the particular state. And what we want is this one here with the curly, you'll notice that it'll give me all of my cases for me. And this is different than current Xcode versions because what I historically would do is I would go ahead and write it out like this and then I would wait for the Xcode error to pop up and I would hit this and then hit fix and it would basically do that for me. So what's nice is the autocomplete is smart enough as it I think should be to figure out what are all the cases and it autocompletes all of them for you so you're not waiting for Xcode to yell at you with the error and then to bring it in. So let me toss a break in all of this and let's move on to the other new stuff. So let's see, what else is new in Xcode 13? So one thing that's also new, if we have a bunch of errors showing up, or actually we have warnings here showing up already, so this is a good example. These warnings are kind of in your face. What I mean by that is they're taking up a good majority of the space in the line length here. And what if we didn't want it to take up that much space? So we can actually minimize them now. So if we go to Xcode and then Preferences, and here we're gonna go to General, there is a checkbox here which allows us to uh, minimize our warnings and issues. So here for our issues, it's saying Show Inline. We're gonna say show minimize. And if you take a look now, our actual warnings show up right there. So it's pretty cool. It makes your look a little cleaner. I actually like the fact that you get it in line because it's obnoxiously in your face. So it forces you to go and fix it, but definitely available uh, to you guys if you're into that. So now that we're actually in preferences, the other thing that I'll briefly touch on here, which is all the rage these days, is Vim support. So if you go to text editing, and then you go to editing here, at the very bottom, we have a new checkbox to enable Vim key bindings. So people that use Vim, uh, basically they're shortcuts for those of you that don't know, to do a bunch of fancy things like go to the end of a line or front of a line. And the people that use Vim are diehard Vim fans and they think it's the greatest thing ever. I'm not one of those people, but Xcode now actually has Vim support, which to a lot of people out there is a big deal. So if you're one of them, definitely come and check this box and enable it and you'll be good to go. So I'm gonna uncheck this box because I don't know how to use Vim. So we'll go ahead and close up preferences and let's talk about the other two big improvements. The first one is in storyboards. So for those of you that are still using storyboards, this is pretty interesting. The first one we'll talk about here is buttons. So if I go ahead and grab a button from the elements here and I drop it directly onto my uh, view controller here, you'll see that it's a pretty standard looking button. Now, what happens if I wanna apply a corner radius to it or make it have a different style? Since there are new button styles in iOS 15 and supported in Xcode 13, we have a new option here in the attribute inspector for the button. So we've got gray, tinted, and filled. Let's try filled since that's the one I personally like a lot. Let me also go ahead and expand this button, make it a tad bit bigger so everyone can see it. So we have these options in here for the button. Similarly, for corner radius, we now have a corner style, which is pretty cool. We have fixed, dynamic, small, medium, large. If we take a look at medium, I'll zoom in here so everyone can see that subtle corner radius, definitely there. So what's pretty cool about this is that you can, you know, add all this stuff directly in storyboard if you are using storyboard and you don't need to fuss around in the code to get this very basic functionality. And uh, even though we have these like button styles and 
you know, corner styles. Of course, you're still free to change the foreground and background colors and all that good stuff that you would expect to see. So those are buttons in a nutshell. And the other thing I want to talk about in the storyboard is accessibility support. So let's say I go ahead and create a label here for Hello World. We want to make sure that we support accessibility in our application. So a good example is for those users that are using accessibility to change your font size. So down in these icons down here, there's this little icon here to open up the uh, accessibility view and we can go ahead and toggle accessibility on in here and you can simulate a bunch of different things to see your actual storyboard uh, adapting to different accessibility elements. So the best one that I'm going to demo here is dynamic type which is font size because you can actually bump this up and you can actually make sure that your everything looks good that your UI works appropriately with the larger and smaller fonts. So we can see our button is definitely getting bigger. Uh, the reason our label is not actually getting bigger, I believe, is because we need to change the font over here. So we have system font 17. That's not actually what we want. We want it to be adapting to the different types. So I'm going to go ahead and call this uh, body type for its given font. Go ahead and hit done. And then once again, we're going to go down to the accessibility button here. On the bottom left, we'll make sure we bump up the font size now. And now we can actually see... Uh, our font scaling up and down. Clearly this label is not accessible because it gets cut off a tremendous amount. So it's really nice that we have accessibility stuff now in Storyboard. No more excuses as to why we don't support accessibility if you're using Storyboard. So that is Storyboard. And the very last thing that I want to talk about in terms of in Xcode directly is landscape support in SwiftUI uh, applications. So I'm actually going to open up a new project or create a new project I should say and we'll go ahead and create a new application I'll go ahead and call this a landscape I'm gonna change our interface uh, to be Swift UI since this is Swift UI related and we'll go ahead and uh, create this project toss it onto the desktop and I'll simply go ahead and hit the resume button on the right here to load up our preview Hopefully it doesn't take too long to load. My computer fan always loves to get super loud as soon as it starts to load. So bear with me. But basically what you can do is now you can see your previews and landscape supported. So basically what it sounds like you can do. I'd like to show it to you guys. Hopefully if it doesn't take too long to load. In the meantime, the other two things that I'll talk about momentarily is Doc C support, which is a way to generate documentation for your applications. Uh, in a first party supported way. So there's some third party solutions out there, but Apple has opened this up for their own uh, framework to generate documentation. That's the first thing. The other thing that I will talk about is Xcode Cloud, which is really for teams to do CI, CD, and just testing in a team environment before they go ahead and ship their application to test flight or the app store or wherever it might be going. So now that this guy has decided to uh, load, we can see this icon here. It's the uh, third icon from the right. So if I go ahead and click on it, what you'll notice is, or what should happen, and maybe this is a beta thing, uh, we should see it rotate. So if I go ahead and click on it, it looks like fail to build content view. Let's try that one more time. Sometimes Xcode beta is super duper flaky. So if it's doing this for you, then it's probably not you. It's probably Xcode. But you guys get the point. Ah, I see what happened here. I think I clicked it a little, a little too many times. So We'll go ahead and change the uh, style here for the preview. Let's go ahead and fix this. Let me bring that uh, curly brace back. And we'll go ahead and hit this button just once. And it should bring in our modifier to preview in landscape. Go ahead and hit resume one more time. And let's see why it's yelling at us. This is not good. If available, ah, I see. So basically what we want to do is we want to bump up our minimum iPhone deployment targets from 14 to 15 since landscape for some reason, some odd reason, landscape support is only available in iOS 15. So go ahead and hit command B. We'll hit resume here one more time and we hopefully should see this boy jump into landscape. So there it goes. Awesome. So let's, uh, let's jump on over to uh, Xcode Cloud and Doxy, and we'll talk about those a little bit more in depth. All right, so moving along, we're going to start to talk about Doxy. Doxy is Apple's own solution for generating documentation for your actual project code. 
So in the description here that I'm not going to read to you guys, basically you can use a special variant of Markdown to generate these docs and they'll actually show up directly in Xcode 13's documentation browser. So if you ever notice Apple's own documentation like this here, they use Docc themselves to generate it and you can start making your own documentation just like theirs. And finally, we've got Xcode Cloud. I unfortunately do not have beta access. I have signed up, so hopefully if I get access soon, I'll go deeper into this. But Xcode Cloud is a way to run automated builds, testing, CI/CD integration and deployment in the cloud, as the name implies. So you can do a bunch of automated workflows. This is really great for multiple people in a team environment committing to a single project and application to make sure that nothing is broken before a build goes out to test flight. You can automate all that with your screenshots here. And of course, Apple has a ton of great videos uh, alongside the documentation here, which go very, very far into detail in terms of what you can do, how to set it up, and yeah, lots of WWDC sessions on it. So that's all we've got for you guys today. Lots of new things in Xcode 13. Lots of other, lots of other things that I actually didn't even get a chance to talk about here. If you enjoyed the video and want to see more, drop a like down below. Subscribe for more iOS, Xcode, and Swift UI content. Thanks again for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.